Let's talk about white balance. There's a short answer and a long answer to this. The short answer is if you're a beginning photographer, your white balance, you're going to want to leave it right here on auto white balance. Basically, what this means is that different light sources have different temperatures, and those temperatures have different colors. For the most part, auto white balance does a pretty good job, but what will happen is you'll be shooting and you'll notice this like blue or a yellow or sometimes even a magenta hue to your images that's really unpleasing. The human eye is amazing, makes these adjustments naturally. Camera sensors need a little help. They need to know the source of the light that we're shooting in. So if you start to see this, I would say after you get a hang of exposure and focusing, then you're gonna want to start dialing this in a little bit more specifically. We can go through them on the bottom here. Again, we can also ask, access with the MFN button. If we come up right here, same thing. So we have auto white balance, and there's two flavors of it. There's an ambient priority, and there's a white priority. Very difficult to see the difference between these to the untrained eye. The idea on this is that you would set the icon to the condition you're shooting in. So this is a sun icon, which would be for daylight. We have a shade icon if you were shooting in the shade. We have a cloud icon if it was cloudy. We have a tungsten light icon if we're shooting in tungsten light, which is a light bulb. We have a fluorescent light icon. We have a flash icon if we're using flash. We have a custom white balance, and we have our Kelvin temperature. That's the short answer. Select the icon for what you're shooting in. Now the long answer is that each of these presets assumes a certain temperature. And that temperature can be demonstrated easily in this Kelvin temperature setting where we can adjust up or down the Kelvin temperature setting. Far too much to go into for a beginning photographer. But suffice it to say this Kelvin temperature will do the opposite of whatever light we're shooting in. I like to use the example of candlelight. Candlelight has a very low Kelvin temperature. Low Kelvin temperatures are very yellow. So let's say we're shooting in 2600 Kelvin, candlelight. So we put this Kelvin setting on and it adds a bunch of blue to balance that out. If we're shooting in a very hot temperature, like physical temperature, that's a high, a very high Kelvin temperature. It's going to be more blue. And, and putting this setting into a Kelvin of 7,000, you can see that it's adding orange. White balance is going to add a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue, depending on the light that we're shooting in. And there's also green and red that can get involved. You can see that we can tweak our white balance. I definitely recommend do not doing this, where you can come in and tweak your white balance shift. This is far beyond the scope of what a beginner would need to know. I've used this maybe on one camera in my life and it's, it was not a Canon camera. Canon colors are usually pretty accurate, pretty great. And that's what this white balance shift and bracketing is all about. For the most part, we don't mess with it. So there is one other feature in here. I'm gonna adjust this back down. I'm shooting in light bulbs that I know emit at about 5,100 Kelvin. So I just dial it in. There may be a setting, for example, at a wedding where you're dealing with mixed lighting conditions where you have tungsten and fluorescent light in the same shot. So the way you handle this is you take a picture of something white. So let's take a picture of something white. There it is. And what we can do is come in to our auto white balance setting, custom white balance, and we're gonna tell the camera this picture that we just took is something that's white. When it hits set, and we're telling the camera to accept this as white in this environment, we hit okay, and it's telling us set your white balance to custom white balance icon. So the custom white balance icon that I'm using through the MFN button, it's gonna be right here. It's that little icon and I set it there. That is how you custom white balance. Shoot something white in your environment. It can be a you know, tablecloth, a sheet of paper, a bride's dress, a ceiling, a wall. It just has to be white. Then you come in 
tell the camera this is what I sampled, change it to custom white balance, and it can really save you. White balance is more important when you're shooting video versus something like a still image. Because still images, they're easy to adjust in post. Video can be a little tricky, it can be a lot harder, especially if we're shooting in RAW for stills. We have all this flexibility of editing, processing power. So yeah, keep that in mind. Video settings, make sure you have your white balance dialed in correctly. We'll talk about video stuff more on the crash course.